Warning, what you are about to see may or may not contain way too much sarcasm. Please, please, fly responsibly. <sighs> hey everybody, this is Sully, and I have seen some misinformation by Mr. Steele. You know, I mean, who, who the heck is Mr. Steele? Why, why, what, what? He put out a video a while ago about how to get into FPV racing the right way. The right way, as if there's a wrong way. He put it out, you know, the right way. As if, ooh, the, who the heck is he to tell anybody how to get into FPV racing? I mean, honestly, like, who, who is he? Like, who cares, right? I mean, I want to I wanna go through some, some of the things you need to do to get into FPV racing the right, right way. And by the right, right way, I mean the right, right, right way. Is this like the double negatives? But whatever. Number one, start off with a five inch. Five inch quad. The cheapest you can get, five inch. Because you started off with dad's beater Chevy Camaro that could do zero to 100 in like two and a half seconds, maybe. And uh, yeah, you want a five inch racer to start off with. Five inch, cheapest you can get, just get a five inch racer right out the gate. You want to start off with a five inch racer with the biggest motors you can get. 2306 or bigger. Go hard, go home. One or the other. Biggest one. Carbon fiber frame, just so you can run it into something. When this thing is flying, it is not a death machine. So whatever you do, just reach out, grab it out of the air. Okay? Just remember, don't land on the ground, grab it out of the air. That's, we're going to start off with the equipment first. After you got your five inch racer, we'll come back to this in a minute. I'm going to lay this right here. We're going to come back to the five inch racer. What you need, what you need, box style goggles. You want box goggles. You do not want fat sharks. Why you want box style goggles? You want this little piece right here. It's sharp. So when you put it on and you're flying around and you've got a pound and a half hanging off your head in the front, box style goggles, this will give you the coolest line across your nose. Your visibility will be great. Box goggles. That's the first. Get the cheapest you can get. Who cares if it has diversity? Nobody cares about that. Diversity, meh, whatever. So number one, first thing you need, other than a five inch racer, box goggles. Okay, on these box goggles, you're gonna wanna get DVR so that you can put out DVR videos unedited so the other FPV racers can see what you do and know that you are the best one ever at it. So DVR, you're gonna add it to Sweet. your box style goggles. Box style goggles, you're gonna get the red line across the nose and perfect visibility in any conditions. Cheapest you can get, right here. Box style, okay? That's your second purchase. Your third purchase. Ah, oh, this is the good one. Fly Sky Radio. You can get Eternity or any other type of radio, but Fly Sky is the one I use, I love it. Fly Sky Radio. You're going to want to do nothing to it because it comes perfectly as is. Whenever you hook it up, you are not going to want to set a fail safe because it's just going to fall out of the sky if you do that. You know, I mean, if you lose range, you want to see how far, how fast that thing can go. You do not want to set a fail safe inside your radio with your quad. You want completely fail safe free, like team fail safe, team no safe. Don't want that. So once you get your box goggles, your Fly Sky, your five inch racer. By the way, because I'm at it, two inch racers, three inch racers, two S, three S. These are terrible to fly with. You don't, you can't practice with them. They fly like crap. They're horrible. They are just disgusting. You do not want to get one of these. Leader 120. You don't want to get it. I mean, who cares if you can walk out in your front yard and fly around? It's not the same. You can't do 150 miles an hour. And if a prop hits you, it won't cut. I mean, who cares? Like, eee. it does no damage when it hits. You want the five inch to start, all right? Don't even think about starting with a simulator, okay? No, 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 no. You're not a video gamer. You're an FPV racer, not a video gamer, okay? So simulators, totally out. Totally, totally, totally out. Do not do simulators. Lift off, terrible simulators, horrible. Especially whenever you can fly around Joshua Bardwell's house. Who cares about Joshua Bardwell's house? No, just say no to simulators. Grand Theft Auto V, horrible simulator. I mean, it's, it's an open world you can fly around in using your fly sky and an F4 board. It's an open world. 
and you're flying around it. Who cares about that? I want to fly where I can do some real damage when I hit something. You know, I don't want to be in a computer generated world learning how to do tricks and stunts. FPV simulators, two inch racers, three inch ra No, no, that is not for you. Okay, not for you. Moving on. I know it's going kind of fast, but we got our quad. Five inches only. Go hard or go home. If you can get a six inch quad that does 180 miles an hour, get that one. Okay, because everybody wants to start off in a Ferrari or in dad's Camaro or in dad's Corvette that he built from the ground up. Might do quarter mile in, I don't know, about nine seconds. I'm just saying that's how I start, but whatever. Cool, cool. All right, so we have our transmitter. Team no fail safe, okay? Do not set up anything with it. Just bind it and go. It's called a bind and fly for a reason. Bind and fly for a reason. Bind it, go. Don't look at your fail safe. Don't check your options. If this thing gets out of range, okay, it does, it does. You at least get a good shot of how fast that thing can go whenever it fail safes or doesn't fail safe and just takes off. Flyaways are awesome, okay? Next up, now that we can get in the air, kinda, with our five inch racer. Big motors, five inch props, go hard or go home. 5149s even, 5.1 inches, even better. You want the best you can get the fastest you can get right now. After that, we're going to go with batteries. 4S or bust, okay? 2S, 3S to learn on. Don't think about modifying your transmitter like Joshua Bardwell says so that, you know, you can use a 4S battery but only use 75% of the power. No, I'm just going to say no. Do not do that. You want 4S or bust. You want full power. You want 6S now, honestly. Like whenever you make it, 6S or bust. But 4S, since you're a beginner, a 4S is fine. It's totally fine. Okay, but only in a 5-inch. 4S in a 3-inch, 2S in a 2-inch, 4S in, pfft. yeah, no. 4-inch, 4S, 5-inch, 5S, 5-inch, 6S, 5-inch. See how this works? More is better. Bigger is better. Bigger, faster, better, stronger, go, okay? Now, since you aren't doing the FPV simulator, since you aren't doing the two and a half, two inch to three inch range, flying around getting some stick time, what do you need? Batteries, lots of them. When you get batteries, when you get lots of batteries, get the cheapest you can get. Who cares if this thing is going to sag to 2.5 volts? Who cares? Who cares? You're in the air for that whole 20 seconds before it sags like crazy. So get the cheapest batteries you can, as many of them as you can. And when you're storing them, when you're storing them, don't get one of those lipo bags. Don't get one of those ammo boxes with sand over it. You store them in a metal container, metal only. That way it can withstand the fire if these things erupt. So we're on batteries now. As many of the cheapest as you can get. Zop batteries, awesome. These don't even have a label. If they don't have a label of what name they are, oh, perfect, perfect, okay? So, as many as you can. If, if, in your infinite glory, in your infinite glory, you damage a battery cell, like one or two or 10, whatever, you're flying 4S and you crash and you do some damage to the cell. What you do, electrical tape, just wrap it around. Okay, don't check to see if there's any hole in the system. Don't check to see if there's fire. Pfft, it's for pansies. Just wrap it up with some tape. It's like the old saying goes. If it's supposed to move and it doesn't, use WD-40. These aren't supposed to move and they don't. So you don't need WD-40. And if moves and it shouldn't, duct tape. In this case, electrical tape because you're dealing with the electrical components. So damage to batteries, fly them till they drop out of the sky. Who cares? It's not a fire hazard. This is not a fire hazard, okay? If you want to, you can lick the, <laughs> if you want to, you can lick the terminals to check to see if the voltage is right. But, but you can also get the cheapest charger available. One, uh, a one battery charger. This gives you very little output. It does work as a field checker. So whenever you put it in, you can see I'm at, what am I at? I'm at 12.2 volts, you know, because I run the heck out of them. 
but one one battery charger you charge these things one at a time best thing ever don't get a parallel board if you do get a parallel board and a, like an i6b or something make sure make sure you save that four dollars and you get the ripoff one doesn't have all the safety stickers make sure you get the ripoff one we're going through batteries now batteries remember cheaper is better more is better more s's is better s's got it good easy stuff easy 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 high quality stuff here okay okay so so remember batteries more s's more better mo better mo 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 you strap it on and you fly okay five inch 4s or bust okay no fpv simulator no liftoff no drl no grand theft auto 5 just put it on there sticks and go trust me you've played video games before it's just the same remember controller or i'm sorry transmitter it's got two sticks and a couple of switches you don't need to worry about any of them other than arm disarm and uh go got it good 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 batteries once again more better more better if they have no label they are for you no label is a good label all right now in the oh i forgot charger you know what to do one battery at a time charging you don't want to have any fancy settings you just want to pop it in and go never mind that it says one amp is the minimum here if you have a 450 battery just just pop it in two two c is fine two c is fine if you can charge a 10 c 10 c is fine yeah don't don't worry about the c rate you don't need to know so all right we've gotten into the air we've flown 180 miles an hour, started off on dad's Ferrari, whatever. We're doing great, doing great. But, oh wait, I forgot. Once you get all these things in, the bind and fly you get may have cheap props. And by cheap props, I mean props that break when you look at them. This is the X220. It came with some bad props. I will say those were horrible props. So what you do is go back on that Chinese website and you buy the cheapest props you can, okay? In this case, this is for the three inch that I wasted my money on. I hate it. It's disgusting. I hate it. Hate flying it. I can only fly it, you know, like every day. So hate it. But I did buy the cheapest. Dogs are barking. I did buy the cheapest props I can. And these are awesome. Why are my dogs barking? Cheapest props I can. Now, when you buy props, make sure they are flimsy. They break, they have at least four blades, maybe five, six, seven, eight, ten blades. More blades, more better. Trust me. Whenever you buy these flimsy blades, they will flatten out. And that's a good thing because that means you have enough power in your quad to flatten out the blades. It'll fly like great, great. So make sure flimsy blades just go on price. So when you can get 10 sets for $4 or less, buy 10 sets. Buy 20 sets, $8, yeah. Go on price. All right, now we have been in the air. We have our five inch racer. We have our 4S or above. We have our one battery charger. We have our knockoff parallel charger. We have our fly sky radio, cheapest, best, good to go. We have not set up a fail safe because we are team no fail safe. And I wanna see how high that thing can go. 399.9 feet is the highest it can go just off the, uh, I mean, that's, that's obvious. I mean, that's the law, right? 399.9. That's the highest you can go. That's the highest you should go. My quad has never been over 398 feet because I am a safety guru. Guru. Guru of safety. All right. Got our module here. We've put in our DVR. Link up there. Put in our DVR. These are, you just wire it right in and bam. Now, what you do when you go out to fly, what do you do? Never take another person. Never, ever, ever, ever. Don't have someone flying and looking, going, oh, you're about to hit that pedestrian. Pedestrian should know how to drop out of the way because you are a quad flyer. You're an FPV racer. They need to get off your streets and your sidewalks and their backyards because that's where you need to fly. The streets, the sidewalk, backyards, neighborhoods, auditoriums, any place you can just whip it out and fly around, that's where you need to fly. And you don't need another person there. You don't need to obey. Look a lot. Mm -mm. Don't register it with the FAA. Don't do any of that stuff. Don't get your, don't get your 107 pilot's license. No, 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 no. But whatever you do, don't go flying with someone else. Just go flying with you 
your quad, and your goggles that will cover your entire field of vision without a problem. Okay? When you do that, whatever you do, don't put a buzzer on your quad because you will always know where it lands. Always. You just do. I mean, it's like you're, you're telepathically linked to the quad. Only in the 5 inch models though. In the 2 inch, 3 inch, you're not as linked. So you could probably put a buzzer in there, but I don't recommend it. Buzzers are weight. These are added weight. Do not put buzzers in your quad. Don't put lights on your quads either. Because who needs to see it? If it's flying at you, you'll hear it. It's fine. It's cool. You know exactly where it lands. When this lands in tall brush, that buzzer won't do you any good because the battery got ejected anyway. <laughs> So no buzzers, no fail safe. We're good. We're good. Box goggles. Do not have a spotter. Don't go flying with other people. If you go flying with someone else who happens to be an FPV racer, who knows? They might actually be better than you. Oh my God. And then they'll critique you and they'll make you feel horrible about your flying skills. And then you'll have to punch them. And next thing you know, you're in the jail for assault. Like, you don't need that. So leave the buddy behind. This is a nobody system. This is a me first system. Me first. Got it? Now, in the eventuality that you crash and you break something, there are a couple tools you need. There are. You need a cheap, cheap set of drivers. And by cheap, I mean from that Chinese site. And never mind that after a couple of uses, Ugh, couldn't have planned that better. Never mind that after a couple of uses, you know, the handle, the handle may or may not work. You need just just buy the cheapest that you can with the hex hex drivers that you need. Cheapest set of tools. It's got it's got a hex driver. I mean, it, it works. It works. It's fine. It's fine. Totally fine. It is totally fine. It, it, it works just fine. I mean, who cares? Like, you, you can hold it with tweezers. Buy the cheapest set. Cheapest set of tools, keep them in a tin, just randomly laying around. They're fine, fine. You do need a cheap set of tools. Um, whatever you do, you don't need to carry any tools with you while you're out flying either. You, you don't. You don't, don't bother with that. Because whatever breaks in the field, eh, it's going to break. And you, you know, you, you don't rack anyway. So why would you need tools in the field? Don't buy the anything but the cheapest of the Chinese knockoff tools. So don't take them with you in the field because you're not going to wreck. You're not going to have to replace a prop. Nothing like that. Now, let's say something happens. And let's say a pedestrian decided he wanted to run in front of your quad and you hit it you know, five, five blades just spinning, pops this guy in the head, right? And I mean, he's bleeding there, laying on the ground, his nose is all cut up. Just search YouTube for a couple of damaged videos. He's laying there, but that was his fault for being in the way. And what he did, what he did was egregious because he broke your props, okay? And he broke your props and you landed and you cartwheel and next thing you know, your camera is broken. And, you know, this guy, he's bleeding on the ground, but he broke your props. I mean, he might have broken an arm and maybe your motor got damaged on his nose or some junk. And I, I, I hate when that happens because it's just bad. But when it does, you have to be prepared and you have to fix it yourself. So what you do, go back to that Chinese site. Get yourself a 60-watt soldering iron, soldering iron, however you want to say it, 60-watt soldering iron, the one that glows red. Okay, it glows red. You're going to take a copper tube and just shove it in there. All right, make sure zero adjustability on this thing. No, you, 60 watts or bust. And it has to be 60 watts. One size fits all. Bigger is better for your 5-inch racer. So when you get the soldering iron, 60 watts, and you're, you're learning how to solder, don't look at any other video on YouTube about how to solder. Don't learn. Do not learn. It's just there's so much misinformation out there that you will have no idea what's real and what's not real. And if you can use a copper, no idea. You just will not know. So now that you're, you're a soldering expert, because you did it once, and uh, you used it, use the 60 watt, you have to remember, you have to remember, flux is not your friend. Do not use flux. Like, you, flux is cheater. 
It's just cheater stuff. It's for amateurs and people who don't know how to solder. But you, you are a perfect soldering master because you watched. And you have a soldering iron here, 60 watts, one size fits all. No paste, no need. When you buy solder itself, lead free only. I would say get lead, but I'm afraid someone might, might seriously do it and the, they lick it. Next thing you know, they got like some terminal disease, cancer thing growing out their butt and who knows, who knows? So get lead free, no paste and just go to town with it. 60 Watts only. Don't ever clean your soldering tips. N never just no, 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 no. The solder of the past is for the quads of the future. Solder of the past, quads of the future. Do not clean your tips. Just mm, huh. 60 watts. Higher if you can get it. I don't know if I can get a higher than 60 watts. So, now that you're a soldering expert and you have your 60 watt soldering iron from China, China, that Chinese store, $4 by the way, $4. Spend another dollar on a tip. Never clean the tips. The solder of the past, the quads of the future. Once you're an expert at that, which takes you like 10, 15 seconds, you know, first time you plug it in, it'll be great. Even if it glows, if it ain't glowing, it ain't showing. So once you do that, I want you to break one of my other rules. And I want you to buy the cheapest 3S batteries you can. The cheapest 3S batteries you can. And when you do that, you're going to buy four of them. Four. And when you do that, you're going to take them apart with your 60 watt soldering iron and you're going to make three 4S batteries. All you need is some extra cable. These are about a dollar, you know, some 4S connectors and take the cheap ones, the no name 3S batteries and just start putting them together willy nilly style, like getting jiggy with it style, put them together as three 4S batteries. That will save you some money so you can get in the air longer. Never mind, these are 1500 milliamp hour 40C batteries. Don't worry about that C rating. It's a lie. You know, just buy the cheapest in the size you want, in the S you want, and more S's is better. Unless 3S is cheaper. If you get 2S that's cheaper than half of a 4S price, then get the 2S's and just make your own 4S packs with your 60 watt soldering iron. Whatever you do though, whatever you do, don't bother like mixing and matching the batteries and trying to match them up and seeing if their ratings are the same. Just make sure the size is the same. That, that will be a little bit important. So size is the same. 60 watt soldering iron. Do not ever use flux. Do not ever use paste. Don't use any of that stuff. Another thing, since you're an expert at it, do not, and I repeat, do not make yourself a smoke stopper. Okay. This is just a waste of time because you are perfect when you're making the little connections in there. You're perfect. I mean, you're, you're great. You're already an expert. You practice for a minute, minute and a half. You're great. Nothing will ever short out when you plug your battery in. So smoke stoppers, waste of time. And not only that, not only that, but I mean, I've plugged this thing in and this light just as bright as it can, right? It just, and it burned me the light, it was warm and I could have burned my hand. I could have, I could have. It, it was, it was like, ooh, 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 that's kind of slightly warm. I, I mean, it's on, which means that, you know, obviously it's failing and not working correctly. So it's on, I mean, like, mm, if it comes on, it's just going to be a safety hazard because it could burn you. So do not, no, these are wastes of time. Don't build your own smoke stopper. Don't even try it. Yeah, don't build your own smoke stopper. Don't try it. All you're going to do is have a risk of kind of mildly burning your hand whenever the, the thing lights up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt. Like, ah, uh, it's just a bad idea. Do not do it. It's, it's horrible. That gets us on to, what have we covered? Let's just, let's recap here. We have Box style goggles, no diversity. Just get whatever cheap ass antenna you can get. Cheapest one's better. And you want to have that cool ridge across your nose. So do not do anything with the plastic on the inside of here because that's just going to cut a little hole in your nose. And that will keep you focused on the great screen that's inside and that great reception you get. With that, you're going to add DVR because everybody on the internet needs to know how good of a pilot you are. One pack, one take. 
no edits, no music, just, you know, throw it out there. People will love it. They love that sort of thing. So once you get your DVR, well, oh, when you do get your DVR and your quad goes down, uh, do not ever replay the DVR to find out where your quad landed because you are telepathically linked to your quad. So you shouldn't need that DVR for that. You just don't need it. Uh, let's see. So you have your 5-inch racer. You have never done FPV simulators, so don't even try Grand Theft Auto V and don't even try liftoff. Um, flying Joshua Bardwell's house is just, I mean, you'd be better off just pretending you're flying Joshua Bardwell's house. Like, you know, watch, don't, don't watch his videos either. He's terrible, terrible, terrible person. Now, we have our transmitter, team no fail safe. So you haven't set that up because you don't need to. Beta flight settings, it's a bind and fly. It's set up the, every quad you get. You should never check those settings over. You don't want to mess with the manufacturer's intent of how that quad should fly. So do not upgrade your beta flight. Don't flash your ESCs. Don't do any of that stuff. No. Batteries. Mo better. Mo S is better. No label better. Price is king. So get the cheapest you can. Do not go with that whole, ooh, I need quality batteries. You're just going to wreck any. Well, you, you won't wreck. You won't wreck. The other people who aren't, though, they buy those good quality batteries and they hit a pedestrian and next thing you know, their quad slams in the ground, pedestrians bleeding everywhere, and their battery is damaged. I mean, theoretically speaking, the battery's damaged and you just wasted 30 bucks on a good battery whenever you could have had like 10 crappy batteries or maybe six, let's say six, five dollars, five dollars is good for a 4S battery, yeah. So, now that we covered that, cheap tools you want. Let's get two batteries. Batteries are where it's fun. So whenever you get a battery, and let's say you have a 4S cell, 4S battery, and one of the cells gets damaged because a pedestrian stepped out and he didn't care about his face. And you just, you know, he wanted, he wanted that quad to hit his face. He was wanting a nose job anyway. He wanted that. He, otherwise he would have been way off knowing that you were flying at 140 miles an hour. He would have been way off and he would have ducked if he didn't want that nose job. So he wanted it. And let's say it hits and you damage the motor and you damage your battery and you have one bad cell. You can remove that cell with your 60 watt soldering iron. So when you remove that cell and you find out, oh, it's damaged, it's, eh, you know, I charged it and overnight it dropped charge and eh, it's, it's damaged. It puffs like crazy and it's a fire hazard. Okay, it's not a fire hazard. Don't listen to any of those videos online. This thing is totally, you can lick it, you can do whatever, stick a hole in it, hold it in your hand and just kind of drill with it with your fingernail, it's fine. So what you do with these when you desolder them and take them off because they are making your pack weaker, I will grant you that. What you do with these, toss them in the trash, just throw them right in. If you can, make sure the contacts are exposed and just toss them right in the trash. There's nothing in here but some chemistry stuff and some science, yo, you know, and uh, psh, it's trash. So where does trash go? In the trash. Toss them there. I think, yeah, so I think we've actually come to the end of it, except there is one more thing. So before I let you go, before I let you go, I did want to cover parallel charging. And like I said before, you want to get the i6 charger that has no safety warnings all over it saying it's a real one so don't spend the extra five bucks for the real one get the cheap chinese knockoff one you'll save money get a cheap parallel board and remember with parallel boards the more batteries you can put on them the better so wire up whatever you want to do and plug in your batteries that way just remember that you can charge up to 10 to 12 c no problem a few times at least you know if you want your batteries to last, you can do the 1C thing like people recommend, but I say more, faster, better. You know how it goes. So remember, cheap Chinese knockoff. Oh, the one important thing with these. These things are perfectly safe, perfectly safe. They're self-regulating, they're safe. So you just plug everything in, push a few buttons, turns on, and your charging is done done like you can just walk away go have some ice cream eat something somewhere go go fly your other packs because you know you got your other one one battery charger if you end up with this one you know i mean you just plug it in walk away you're fine you're fine 
Whatever you do though, whatever you do, and I can't stress this enough, do not research 18650 sales that you can get from cheap laptops, okay? Once you learn about these, you know, you'll be an egghead and a nerd and you don't want that. What you do want is for people smarter and more nerdy than you because you're an FPV racer, not a nerd. So what you want is just wait for someone to come out with the, the battery packs that you need for your, your goggles or your, you know, if you buy those fat shark things, those are awful. Don't, don't buy those. But if you buy them, you know, some people are like, oh, I'd made my own fat shark module. No, you don't need that. You want to buy the real thing, obviously, because you're not a nerd. You're, you're an FPV racer. So do not research these. Do not buy yourself a, uh, don't, don't waste your money on a voltimeter. Like these are awful and you don't need them anyway. Cause why would you be checking voltages or continuity? Don't, don't just don't waste your time on this. Cause once you do this, this just says nerd. Okay. This nerd and you don't want to be a nerd. You're an FPV racer. So do not learn anything about batteries or technologies and stuff like that. Just buy the stuff that's out there. Bind and fly. Don't do anything with the settings. Don't watch, you know, oh, you're going to learn something today. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not a nerd. Uh, no, no. You're an FPV racer. You're not a nerd. You're going to learn something today. You're going to learn something today. Don't watch Bardwell's channel. Don't watch Mr. Steele. Who the heck is Mr. I'm still mad at this. Like, who is he to tell anybody how to get into FPV racing the right way? I mean, it's just go out, buy your bind and fly, stick it on and fly. It's called a bind and fly. It's not called a bind and learn. Okay. So that's going to wrap up my whole video here. If you like this content, please give me a like and a subscription down below. I'm trying, trying to get to a thousand, trying. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's a thousand, like, uh, it's just a goal and a mile marker. But what I wanted to say, like what started this whole thing? I'm still upset that Mr. Steele is like, oh, go out and buy quality components and learn about it. No, they call it bind and fly. Just buy a bind and fly and fly. You bind, click, click, race. instructions come with it. It's fine. Just bind it and fly it. Go have fun. Go have fun. That's all you need to do. Okay. There is no right way. There is no wrong. Well, there fine. There might be a wrong way to do it. I don't know what that wrong way is. I mean, everything I've said today, hard fact, truth and what you should do, hard fact. So don't, oh, there's only one right way to get into FPV and that's Mr. Steele's way. <sighs> don't, don't, don't buy into the hype. I mean, the, the dribs out there like, ooh, let me just show you how to fly. Like, why are you going to learn? Like, just jump in the pool and do it. Buy a Ferrari and do it. Just go drive. Now, one other thing, I know I keep going back to it and I know this video is going long and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I really am, but there's a ton of info about how to get into quad racing. One thing, when this is hovering in front of you, you reach out, put your hand right here, make sure your fingers are right here. You're not going to get hit. If this thing hits you, it's, it's just going to stop. Like the, these things, they stop spinning instantly. So don't worry about this cutting. You know, you might see videos of people going, oh, they're knives, they're flying knives. No, that's only whenever they're out flying. When it's hovering, you can, you can grab it and stop it. Trust me. Trust me. You will not lose a thumbnail if you do that or a finger. You won't. You won't. You, you might. I can't even joke about that one. Do not grab the shit out of the air. Okay. That's, that's the end. That's the story. If the quad's armed, are able to be armed, keep your fingers away from the props. That is absolute truth. I can't even, I can't stress that enough. Okay. I'm telling you flying blades. That's what these things are. Pedestrians on the street, they'll get out of the way. Don't worry about them. flying in the auditorium. That's fine. That, that's, it's not you. Okay. But if you are the one like, Oh, I'm going to do a power loop and come behind me and it's going to hit me. Don't do that. Please don't do that. So I'm going to wrap this up by saying thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging in there. Mr. Steele, Joshua Bardwell, Stu at UA Futures, UAV Futures. Y'all are freaking awesome. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good one. Like and subscribe down below, seriously. And uh, ignore most of this video, except for the whole like don't grab the quad out of the sky thing. Okay. Y'all take care. Have a good one. Peace out.